guys, this is Steve Darcy with Go Engineer, and I want to talk to you today a little bit about uh, setting up your vault. Once it's already created, uh, what do you start with? How, what are some things to think about, and how do you set up folder structures or cards, or what, you know, where do you even begin? So let's get started. Um, I've already created a vault. Uh, I do have a vault, uh, create vault video, so if you want to go back and watch that, you can. Um, I don't have a vault view yet set up, so I'm going to show you a little sneaky thing. Yeah, there is a, a tool that you can go in and create a vault view, but if you already have the uh, the server here and the vault name, then you can just right click on that and say create local view. And I'm going to put it right on the C drive, it needs to know where to put it, so I'll just select that folder. And I want to be accessible to everybody, and i got to log in, my super secret password. Uh, actually, there's no users in here, so I'm going to use the admin. There we go. Usernames and passwords are very, very helpful. All right, so now I have a vault view on my local machine. Go engineer, can double click on it, takes me into the vault, and there I've got my little tabs and everything's good to go. All right, so where do I begin? Uh, some people will start a little bit with a folder structure. Uh, and kind of go back and forth between the admin tool and the folders. So let's talk with about folders real quick. So uh, if you just have one location, you're not doing replication. Now you can only do replication if you have the PDM Professional. So uh, we do have, say for instance, uh, customers here in USA. And then some of the designs we do, we're going to have to put them over in China. So I want to I want to keep that as a separate folder so that way when I replicate it I'm not going to replicate any of the US stuff I'm just going to replicate the China stuff over to the the, the manufacturing plant in China that we need to do it with uh, maybe we also have one in Australia and that's pretty good I'm going to leave that with those three and then we got to think about what what's inside here well hopefully we have some designs let me say designs and then or projects if you want to call them projects or jobs uh, you can have a jobs folder and then start having job numbers and everything underneath there and we'll kind of get into that uh, in a later video uh, but for right now I'm up at the very top level we need to think about uh, whenever the people in China start a new design or the people in US start a new design they have to use some type of a template so I'm going to make a new folder here, and I've seen these called just templates. I like the term global templates. And a couple things are going to be inside here. It may not just be SolidWorks templates. Uh, for right now, I am just going to use templates. Now the thing is, in SolidWorks, when we start from scratch, we have three main options, uh, parts, assemblies, and drawings, okay? And so these templates can actually live inside of PDM. So whenever I start one or if I change the template, then I know that it's everybody's starting with the same one. Now these things live, if you go to your options in SolidWorks and go to your uh, file locations, the very first thing is document templates and where those things live and where they need to, need to be at. So notice mine are way in my 2016 file or folder there. And SolidWorks has a whole lot of different uh, places in which it finds stuff. So all of these things can live inside the vault and be controlled inside the vault. Just kind of depends on how far you want to go. Uh, for this video, I'm just going to stick with document templates and we'll kind of go from there. All right, so there they are. I'm going to go ahead and leave this open and we're just going to go browse. Kind of already got this guy set up. So there's my SOLIDWORKS 2016 templates. This is where it's actually going to find those things. So I'm going to actually we'll just copy the individual ones. I don't really want that bat file or the marker. So we'll deselect that. Copy those. Uh, we'll put those into our global templates, SOLIDWORKS templates folder. Paste. And then 
what I would recommend doing is go ahead and check these in first. Okay, I may make some modifications to them, but I want to at least have one version in the vault for these things. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put them in there. I am going to keep playing with them, so I'm going to check them in, but then I'm going to leave them checked out to the admin, so if I want to do something else, go ahead and say check in. So each of them do have a, a, a single version in the vault, but now I can, I'm the admin, I can still play with them and do whatever I need to with them. Okay, but now we need to set SolidWorks to where it's going to this directory. So let's go over here, delete that guy out of there, and we'll go add. And we're going to go to our C drive, go engineer, global templates, SolidWorks templates folder, and just select that folder. So now anytime I let's go ahead and add that as a search, now I hit the new button, and this if I kind of hover with my mouse, you'll see a little tool tab. Right. Let's see if I can get it to come up. Uh, but this is now coming from that directed location. There we go. So notice it's going from the Go Engineer, Global Template, SolidWorks templates. And uh, so when I start from scratch, you know, I know I'm getting the template from uh, that directory and there's a ton of other settings that you may want to set in there all right uh, let's go a little bit deeper let's talk about files themselves all right so files you can kind of think about in SolidWorks we have kind of two two real file types we have ones that are going to be specific for the uh, the product that we're making and then we have one that are going to be purchase parts uh, things that aren't going to be in a revision, uh, we don't have to check those in, check those out as much, uh, but they do need some control. So typically what I see on site is a directory called a library. Sometimes I see it called standard components or standard library or standards. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but these are going to be, uh, it doesn't matter if you build this thing in China, you need a, a, a bolt or a nut or a washer or something like that. If I'm building in the US, I still need that exact same library component. Okay, so let's let's have some fun with this. I'm in US designs. Maybe I've got a uh, a project number that I'm using. 2056. And I've got this little flashlight. I'm just gonna copy all these folders. Paste them in there. And you can drag and drop or however you want to get your files into the vault. So I've got some assemblies into the vault. Now I use the default so uh, I will automatically have uh, some data cards for the, uh, the parts, assemblies, and drawings and stuff. And we'll get into that in just a bit. But for right now, let's uh, concentrate on the folder structure. Now the files, uh, I prefer checking them in first. Uh, just to make sure that all the links are set in the SQL database. Uh, so I'm just going to do a control A, to select everything, uh, right click, I'm a crazy right clicker, and I'm going to go and check these files in. Okay, so I'm going to check them all in. And that was the folder structure. Uh, we can check it. If you want to look at the uh, contains, make sure that everything is kind of the, the directory that it should be. Exploded is looking at this subassembly. The base, the base is looking at the batteries and all that stuff. So here's kind of the thing. I have batteries in here. Uh, I use batteries in other designs too. So what I need to do is I need to get some of the some of the files that that belong that can be used over and over again and put those in my library. And of course I want to make a library structure to where it's easy to use, to where I can find my files and I can drag and drop them and everybody can get their job done quicker. All right. So there's the battery cover somewhere down here. Okay, battery AA, there it is. So all I have to do is cut it. And as long as I'm inside the Go Engineer vault or any folder inside there, uh, the, the references will stay, stay put. So maybe I need a, a new folder in here. We'll call it batteries. And we'll just paste them in. The file is still checked in. Okay, and the cool thing is I can just, uh, maybe I just want to rename this and call it 
double A. Okay. Now, don't do this. You should have a specific part number that goes with your ERP system or QuickBooks or however you guys are ordering stuff from accounting. Uh, this should be a unique part number uh, for that, that file. Uh, I have seen some people actually put in some kind of a part number and then maybe a uh, a description at the end but for the most part try and use a specific you know totally unique ID number for for your different components and stuff all right so the battery notice that there's the battery uh, the battery is actually used in the base notice the base has already been updated and uh, the base is going to look for the battery and it knows now that it's in that new directory and so everything's pretty good to go. Uh, I can I can kind of check it if I go browse to that. There's the base. If I go to contains, contains is going to look for this part number. It's the battery, and the battery now lives in the batteries directory. So that's the good thing about uh, PDM is you don't have to worry about the links once everything's kind of checked in. Uh, the SQL database will make sure that everything is 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 working and and functioning. Uh, maybe I also have this little pin here, so we can kind of do the same thing. We just cut it, put him in the library, make a folder that makes sense, and paste it in. You can also have two uh, Explorer windows and drag and drop and all that kind of stuff. Let's kind of go back up to the top. Instead of countries, these things could be different business units or, or something like that. Anyway, I hope you understand the concepts of the folders and kind of how to set them up initially. Uh, and again, the, the, the files that are in here, in this case, are going to be specific for a, 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 a product or a product line. And then library components, those are going to be things that you're going to use over and over and over again. All right, last little thing I want to talk about is vault is good for multiple people so the problem is once i have this set up in solidworks just on this one client user interface with all of his uh, file locations going to those folders in the vault and i've got those all set up how do i replicate that and so solidworks gives us a good little tool for doing that uh, you can find it in a couple different places uh, you can go to save or restore settings right underneath your tools uh, you can also find this and your start button We'll go to SOLIDWORKS 2018 Tools, and it's called uh, Copy Settings Wizard. We'll go ahead and run that. So once the settings are all done, then you can save them out into a file. You can tell it what you want to save, system options, toolbar, layout, tool, toolbar layouts, whatever you want. Uh, save those things out. For the most part, the file locations are going to be in the system options here. Okay. So you could just save those out only, save them to a file, and then you use this exact same tool to restore those settings. Same kind of thing, you're gonna browse for that file, and then once you browse for the file, if I created it, uh, you'd get to select what you want to import. So, and some, we've actually had some people actually put these things in the vault and they'll check them in, make some changes to them, or check them out, make changes to them, check them back in. So they'll actually control this as a, a file as well. So a couple different ways to replicate all those settings uh, from one client once it's set up correctly to uh, 50 or 100 different clients. So I hope you enjoyed this video and hope to see you on the next one. This is Steve Darcy with Go Engineer. Thanks. Mm -hmm.